how tense was the beefs and stuff with Suge back in the day when Death Row was at their power? Was was it really as intense as everybody thinks it is? Yeah. Or was it more like the media just hyping shit up a lot of times? No, I mean, if anything, there's probably a lot of crazy stuff that happened that we still don't even know about. But I actually, in in my book, in Original Gangsters, um, I tell the story that Crazy D had an encounter with Suge Knight, and it happened at the Anaheim Theater, the Anaheim Celebrity Theater, and Crazy D just, he didn't know who Suge was. Suge basically was, uh, came on as DOC's bodyguard, and he mm-hmm. was just a quiet guy who had, wasn't known at all in the music industry, and Crazy D, who was in, an early NWA m- member, came up and was just basically saying hi to DOC, and Suge Knight was like, what are you saying to him? And Crazy D was like, I, you know, I wasn't saying anything. And they got into an argument, and then basically Suge punched him through a door, basically. he, I guess he went flying, and Crazy D said his teeth shifted. It was like the hardest punch he'd ever received. And, wow. you know, that was, that was basically just the beginning. And so once Suge consolidated his power, he had kind of three weapons at his disposal. And one was brute force if he needed it. He was, he was a huge guy, for one, and he had this crew around him of guys that were huge, too. And then he also had influence because Death Row was so popular that and had so much money coming in that so many people were looking to death row for, for jobs or for, you know, for, for help in, in the industry and things like that. And then he also was kind of got in with certain aspects of law enforcement. There was uh, an assistant DA, I believe named Lawrence Longo, who was disbarred because he rented Shug, his, his house in Malibu, I think it was, for $19,000 a month, and Suge gave his daughter a record contract. So, and, and not only that, Suge had all these cops on his security. They were like cops from L.A. or Compton who were moonlighting. So they basically had had a lot of power and didn't always use it in the very moral or ethical way. Wow, so Suge was, yeah, he uh, was... Punched him through a door, Crazy D. That's crazy. That is crazy. <laughs> um, shout out to the homie Crazy D, too. Um, now, you said Crazy D of NWA. I'm glad you said that because, um, just like Arabian Prince, a lot of people don't recognize the earlier dudes in NWA. Yeah, we've had the Ghetto Boys on the show, and uh, we, we've had uh, Raheem, we've had Jukebox, DJ Ready Red. A lot of times they're not recognized. Um, shouldn't they be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, too? Because think about it. Cube was on uh, with, with NWA for one record. You know what I'm saying? Um, but so was Arabian Prince. Arabian Prince should have yeah. been in the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, too. Why do you think guys like Crazy D and, and, and uh, Arabian Prince and, and maybe Ron Davis and other guys don't get talked about as much? Well, but don't even get guys, acknowledged, I should say. Yeah. Well, those guys, a lot of them were on the NWA and the Posse album. And I actually think that album is really underrated. You know, yeah. it has the cup where the guys are in the alley and some of them are wearing clocks kind of like public enemy and they've got like 40 some of them and that that album was not authorized by nwa it was it was put out by mccola records their first label once nwa started getting famous so i think and the group members kind of dissed it like mc ren said that that it was a whack album so i think for that reason Mm -hmm. some don't take it seriously, but it's got it's got the first recordings from DOC in a group called the Feel a Fresh Crew, and 
some of those are amazing songs, and it, it's got all sorts of early NWA gems like Eight Ball and and Dope Man with Crazy D, and so so. But even when it came to Straight Outta Compton, Arabian Prince was a major contributor to that album. He's on the cover, which a lot of people know, but a lot of people don't know that he actually helped produce and write a number of the songs and. The reason is is that he he didn't get credit. His name was basically left off a lot of that stuff. He he says anyway, and I believe him because you can you can hear him, you can hear his influence on on certain songs that he's not even given credit for. Yeah, 